In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Okay, right before we get into the Chaplain's Report for the day, I did want to bring up something that I'm really excited about. Today I surpassed my goal on funding for the Ukraine mission trip. So uh, for those of you who know me, I'm actually going on a mission trip to the Ukraine really soon. It's going to be sometime next month, and I'll give you notices on that. In fact, it's a, it's a month away from tomorrow. So a month from tomorrow, I'll be going to the Ukraine. I'll be gone for an entire week, and of course there will be no shows that week, so you'll be very aware of it if you're in my audience. But this trip is very expensive, and it's very difficult for one person to raise enough money to be able to do that. And so different churches around the state have been giving me money to help fund this. And I would just like to give a special thanks to the 10th Street Congregation in Opelika, Alabama, my old church from when I was going to Auburn. Also Tyree Chapel, my grandparents' church up in Kentucky, that they've been funding me and, and they've had some very generous donations. And also my grandfather's church in Dadeville, Alabama, uh, the Dadeville Church of Christ. Uh, you guys have given above and beyond all of you. Thank you so much for your contributions. And hopefully this money will be put to good use and many people out in the Ukraine will hear the gospel for the first time or be convicted in their hearts to obey the gospel because of me going over there. Uh, wish that I could take more credit for that. There's other people that organize it and put me in the right places and plan all of that. So really it's all up to them. But I just wanted to say real quick, thank you, thank you so much for helping fund, uh, helping me out with these funds and, and bringing these to them. Hopefully uh, the, the gospel will be spread in eastern Ukraine because of that. And just like the old church in the first century, that we will see the message of Christ going throughout all of these communities in eastern Europe. But that being said, it is time to uh, go ahead and get into the meat and potatoes of our chaplain's report. And this particular one comes from the book of 1 Samuel. To give you a little context here, Israel has been begging for a king for a while now. Right now they're under the judges system. And so they don't actually have a king. They have various prophets and judges that handle legal matters. And they get fed up with not having a king. Why, I don't know, but... They're restless and they demand of the prophet Samuel that they have a king. And this is that story in 1 Samuel 8, 4 through, through 8. Then all the elders of Israel gathered together and came to Samuel at Ramah. And they said to him, Behold, you have grown old, and your sons do not walk in your ways. Now appoint a king for us to judge us like the other nations. But the thing was displeasing in the sight of Samuel when they said, Give us a king to judge us. And Samuel prayed to the Lord. The Lord said to Samuel, Listen to the voice of the people in regard to all that they say to you. For they have not rejected you, but they have rejected me from being king over them. Like all the deeds which they have done since the day that I have brought them up from Egypt, even to this day, in that they have forsaken me and served other gods, so they are doing to you also. Samuel is obviously not happy with Israel, but oddly enough, God reassures him in the most disappointing way that humanly possible. He says, Samuel, this isn't your fault. This isn't something that you've done. The people are the ones at fault, not because they've rejected you, but because they've rejected me. The whole show today, we've been talking about people that think they know better than everybody else. That think that somebody that just makes decisions for everybody else would be preferable to people making decisions on their own. You see, the whole idea behind the judges system, the whole idea in Israel, is that they had no king. That there were going to be judges to handle disputes to keep them from injuring one another, essentially. But other than that, just left them alone. 
it's the same thing that Thomas Jefferson talked about in his inaugural address. That the only thing the government's really supposed to do is keep people from hurting one another. But other than that, just kind of leaves them to their own devices. And this is exactly what the idea behind Israel was. You're going to be governed by the law of Moses, and there are going to be priests and judges that help oversee a little bit of that, but ultimately you don't have a king. It's up to you as an individual to serve God in the way that he deemed correct. And that's exactly the same idea that we had behind America. Instead of having a king, instead of having some kind of ruler that tells us what we're going to do, we're going to decide for ourselves, and then one day we will stand before God and answer for our actions. Now, we're going to do that regardless of what form of government we have. But the point is, in America, God's supposed to be the king. Not because we're a theocracy, not because we force it down people's throats, but because this nation says to everybody, you figure it out. You do what you think is best. I don't want a king. I don't want Doug Jones or Kamala Harris or Bernie Sanders or Cory Booker or any of these people to be kings. But you know what else? I also don't want Donald Trump to be king. I don't even want George Washington to be king. No kings. That's what Israel got wrong. They were convinced that if they had somebody controlling their life and telling them what to do, they would be better off. Why? I don't know, but that's what they decided. And eventually, the way that God reacts to this is he tells Samuel, look, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. They don't want me to be king of their life. They want someone else to do it. And that's what's going on here. We have rejected God. We have rejected his proper place as king of our life. And because of that, people are seeking after a worldly power to tell them what to do. It never works out in the end. Just like if you look through the history of the Old Testament, it didn't work out for them either. When they had a human being telling them what to do and how to live, there were a handful of good kings of Judah. There were no good kings in the northern kingdom. And even the best kings, even people like Hezekiah and David, still had massive and obvious moral failings that caused Israel to suffer because they were imperfect. And it really goes back to a quote by C.S. Lewis that I've read I don't know how many times and really influenced my ideas about what government ought to be. And by the way, Lewis and I actually disagree about the form of government that is best because he believed a democracy was better. I don't. But the premise underlying the rationale for how he got there is rock solid. He said, I don't trust a person to have power over his fellow man because I haven't seen anybody that is trustworthy with that kind of power. In other words, it's not that I look out and say, okay, mankind is pretty good, and so they'll be fine governing themselves. That's not the reason he supported the form of government that he did. He realized, just like the Bible states, that the world will reject Christ and the world is going to do evil. What Lewis looked out and said, it's not that I'm saying, oh, people as a whole are good and therefore they should trust, we should just trust the collective to handle it. That's not what he was saying. He was saying, I don't see any individual that can have the kind of power to control what other people do. And that's why I think a king is a bad idea. If there is one thing that is consistent throughout the scripture, Old Testament, New Testament, you can go all the way back to the days of Samuel and before, you can go all the way forward even into the book of Revelation. The one thing that is consistent is mankind should not have power over one another. The only person that is worthy of that level of loyalty and devotion and obedience is a perfect God. Stay the course, friends. Oh, hey. What are you still doing here? 
Video's over. I'm off the clock, so go watch another one of my videos or something. Or better yet, you could subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell, and if you do that, then you'll get a notification when I actually am on the air and you can watch me then. In the meantime, I'm going to take a nap.